I'm Lee Spencer with the Racing Boys, and I'm here with Chad Boat. And one of the reasons I want to talk to you is because you have impressed me in what you've been able to accomplish with Tucker Boat Motorsports in such a short period of time. I just wanted to find out, you know, what made you make the jump from competitor to owner of a race team? Well, I think it's always kind of been something that we've been transitioning to the last couple of years, you know, starting off two years ago, we ran Zane Hendricks, uh, you know, a fair amount of the season and then full time with Carson Ellis last year. And then just with some of the opportunities that were presented to me at the end of the year, I thought it made the, you know, the most sense long term for me to kind of make the transition. Um, you know, I always tell people I can always come back and, and run, um, run a midget but you know having these opportunities from toyota or i racing to to bring high caliber drivers on board to the team was something that i couldn't pass up and then you know obviously super excited to bring nos energy drink and andrew laser and chris windham on on board this year so as we continue to build the program you know it's hard to give 100 percent to driving and to continue to grow it and i felt that it was in my best interest long term to kind of focus on that right now it's been a week since we left tulsa have you gotten over finishing second? Does a driver ever or driver slash owner ever get over finishing second? Uh, you know, to be that close, obviously it was a great week for the team. Um, you know, to have five cars, um, you know, three cars in the A main, uh, Dylan missed it by one and then Gio missed it by two. So to have five cars within, you know, three spots of making, you know, having five in the A main is a big deal. Uh, you know, obviously with the way the week went, um, we had high expectations, you know, winning the by rock, winning the prelim, you know, pretty much being the fastest car on the track every time we hit. Um, but you know, we knew it was going to be tough. We knew we were going to have to be hundred percent. I told, uh, you know, another, another person that we were going to have to be perfect to win. And we were just, uh, you know, just a little bit off with the car, those last, uh, 20 laps. And it's, uh, it's pretty, you know, disappointing and heartbreaking, honestly, um, I took a picture of, uh, someone posted a picture of me and Chris Ferson in the infield and that's going to be my, you know, my motivation for the years to, to never, never have that feeling again. And that's definitely going to what drive and, you know, make those late nights at the shop worth it. Cause you know, you never want to have that feeling again. Yeah. Larson said he reminded Christopher in the post race pictures to smile because he knows how devastating it is. He's, he's been there and, and he gets it. But when you have, so many teams do as well as they did and you know to go from just a couple of midgets to to running as many as you did the sense of accomplishment you have to feel good about what tucker boat did in tulsa yeah i honestly you know it was one of the 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 proudest weeks i've had and honestly the most disappointed i've ever left the track in a combination of uh you know highs and lows which is what racing is but uh you know to be to have so many guys be competitive, you know, to get five podiums, um, you know, with numerous guys, Aaron Reitzel was super fast. Dylan was super fast. All the cars honestly were, you know, really good. Um, but to, to, you know, leave there just one spot short of, of the golden drillers, definitely disappointing. And, you know, it only makes me hungrier and, um, you know, already thinking of ways to make the car better for next year and ways we can improve and, you know, carry that on throughout the year. For a young guy such as yourself, how much did it help you to actually go to college and get a degree in finance so you knew the ins and outs of what it takes to professionally operate a race team? Yeah, it's something I'm you know, very fortunate to kind of to be able to do. As I was racing, I kind of took classes when I could and um, you know, something I'm super proud of. Um, you know, one of the most proud things I have is my college degree. So uh, to be able to finish that and, you know, race full time has been a, a super blessing and, uh, you know, definitely use it every day. And as I continue to grow the business, that's one of the parts I, I really enjoy is the, the number side of it and how you make it work and um, working with different partners to, to put programs together and having a, an understanding of what it takes to, to operate a team is definitely it's definitely been helpful. Speaking of the numbers side of it, to be a factory team for Toyota is also a benefit, is it not? Yeah, obviously, you know, we're continuing to uh, to grow our relationship with Toyota. Um, you know, having guys like Christopher come on board definitely doesn't hurt. But, uh, you know, they've been super supportive uh, over the last year, and we're continuing to, to grow that relationship and look forward to working with them, not only them, but, you know, iRacing, um, NOS, everyone that, uh, you know, Pristine Auction, everyone that makes this deal happen. 
Uh, Toyota announced, uh, I guess it was last month, that they're also releasing a Sprint car engine. Is you know, um, has there been discussions with you as far as running that Sprint car engine and in, in some Sprint car races later this year? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the schedule is with the race, or you know, with the engine as far as races. Obviously, um, our schedule is fairly limited. You know, 15 ish races this year so it will see i'm sure they have a full-time team that they'll have do most of the development just because you need to be racing it night in night out to to develop it as much as we could but i would definitely imagine when there's a an engine ready that we'll 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 get one and be able to take it out there and play with it we're definitely excited um you know we had known for quite a while that it was going to be happening and and, uh it's exciting and we're thankful to uh toyota for continuing to grow the sport um you know having engine manufacturers like toyota and ford involved in sprint car racing and dirt racing in general is uh it's great for the sport and just continues to help it grow i can remember um i guess maybe the arca garage or the truck garage when they still had spring training at daytona and you were down there just you know hashing away with your dad um but looking at it now i think about kids like buddy kofoid and and um seb wise they're not looking at nascar you know they weren't you know you were looking at stocks and they're they're looking at staying in world of outlaws and i have to think that um with the involvement of of an organization like toyota it's only going to get bigger than it is right now absolutely yeah i think you know the mindset that being a world of outlaw sprint car driver is uh you know a downgrade from being a professional nascar driver i think is uh is wrong because you know the world of outlaw guys are the some of the best drivers in the world and just because you don't race on sunday doesn't mean you're not you know capable of doing it so you look at guys like donnie shots that have been more than content to just run sprint cars um you know throughout his career and you know he's one of the most successful drivers there ever would be and i know if he got into a, the right stock car in the right situation that he would you know, there's no reason he couldn't race with the Kyle Busch or someone like that. But, you, you know, you see drivers just taking different paths, and I think it's cool that they have, the, you know, the that they want to go and drive sprint cars because that is uh, that's definitely the top echelon of racing. On the other side of that, though, you have to be, you know, this is another little pat on your back, Chad, because I'm sitting there and I'm looking at the guys that didn't make it out of the B-Main like Gravel, like Donnie. And to have as many cars as you had get there, I mean, you know, in such a short period of time for you, I think that's an accomplishment. Yeah, absolutely. And it just goes back to, you know, the effort that everyone put in, going be, you know, prior to Chili Bowl. And, um, you know, we definitely had some hard races that we learned some things. And, you know, we kind of put it all together and, you know, brought the best package we thought we could to Chili Bowl, and it, it paid off. So I think we'll be able to use, you know— just as we race more, we continue to build our notebook. Obviously, Keith has had us a notebook that's 20 years full, where ours is, uh, you know, me kind of just focusing full-time on the cars has only been since October. So we're continuing to build a notebook each time we go out there and see different tracks and have the experience um, to make those, those last-minute decisions that help you succeed. How much have you learned from your dad over the years? Because, I mean, he's been, you know, trudging at this for a long time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, everything I've learned has come from him, and then I continue to kind of just, uh, you know, add to to those those things and with my own experiences. And a lot of times that you have to experience something on your own and be able to make those own de- your own decisions on what you think you need to do with the car, and um, then you kind of live with the live with the consequences. But uh, you know, doing it doing it yourself, it's it's definitely different. But everything that I've learned and the, you know, my work ethic and everything that has been instilled in me definitely comes from him. Well, we always hear about my good buddy, Chad, your good buddy, Christopher, how much you think you'll have him racing for you this year since he's trying to make that transition to NASCAR cup series. Yeah, obviously I think it depends on, um, you know, how the, you know, the transition is going in which I fully expect him to, to run well. And I don't think there's any question about that. So I think we're, we're planning on running the sprint car, uh, you know, 15 times. And then, um, once the season ends, I'm sure we'll do a little bit of midget racing. Um, but obviously, you know, he's super focused on, on the cup series, but we'll, well, he has a couple off weekends, so we'll take the sprint car out and go play with it. And the boss man might get in the car a couple of times, just, uh, if you feel like you're a far enough ahead of the game that you can allow yourself that luxury. Yeah, you know, so I think there's a couple of races that I um, would maybe like to run, um, but definitely not going to do anything that 
uh, hinders the team or, you know, it's kind of a burden if we're in a place where we're, we're comfortable, maybe adding an extra car. Um, I may run a car during midget, Indiana Midget Week uh, one night or two. Well, we look forward to seeing what you can do with Chris Wyndham and Andrew Laser this year. And, uh, well, how many days now to, to Chili Bowl? I guess there's like a calendar. You're already thinking ahead since it is the biggest race of the year. But, um, you know, again, you guys had a phenomenal run and uh, look forward to see what you guys can accomplish in 2020. Thank you. And, I, uh, yeah, definitely excited to uh, to go full-time racing with Chris and Andrew. I think they have, a, you know, a ton of potential. Obviously, Chris is a – you know, national champion. Um, so we're hoping to to get him the triple crown. That's definitely our, one of our, our main goals. And then just continue to help Andrew develop. You know, he has a solid foundation. You know, he ran for a great team last year that helped him. And I think we can just help him take that, that next step and, and go to the next level and start battling for wins and top fives. Appreciate your time. Thank you.